Hi again, I'm Stacy, and this is Mary, and we're coming at you from Tamarack Nature Center Park of Ramsey County Parks. And this is the culmination, the end of our uh, marvelous Monarchs Week. Yes. So it's been really nice out now that it's cooling off, and we want to get encourage you to get outside and take some walks in our parks, whether it's at Battle Creek or Keller or here at Tamarack. And if you're in those sunny spots where there are grasses and prairie plants, stop and take a peek at some of the milkweed plants. So you can look for the eggs and the caterpillars. So they typically, the monarchs, will lay their eggs in the top third of the plant. So you don't need to pick anything to look, you just go up to the plant, take the leaf, bend it over, and look on the bottom. And look for those eggs. You don't have to pick it because this is private property. You don't need to pick while you're just looking anyway. So maybe you'll find an egg here. Maybe you'll find a big chunky caterpillar. Maybe you'll be super lucky and even see one of the chrysalises. Now, you might be lucky enough to live in an area that has some milkweed around you. Maybe some gardens or things like that. Well, I grew up in a uh, neighborhood that had lots of gardens and my dad had a garden. I just this year wanted to honor it him by giving him a Monarch Way Station certificate. This is not it right here, this is just a picture of it, but um, he's going to get a certificate of appreciation and a sign that he can hang in his garden. A Monarch Way Station means that he is providing habitat for monarchs and for other kinds of pollinators. Uh, a habitat, he'd have to have food, water, shelter, and space and his garden has always had all of those. I am just very, very lucky to have that. So if you are going to plant some pollinator plants and have a way station or a garden for butterflies, what would you plant? Well, when you do this, uh, you have to have flowers that bloom throughout the season. Mm -hmm. So I have in my garden, I have right now growing catmint, which is not a very showy flower, but it is one that produces a lot of nectar. Okay. In the middle of the summer, my bee balm or monarda will be going very, very tall. And then late in the season, when the monarchs are starting on their migration down south, I have sedum, and sedum provides a lot of nectar, not just for butterflies, but for other insects too. Awesome. So all three of those plants, plus milkweeds, they're actually perennial, which means if you end up wanting to plant some, if you can go to a garden center, buy them there, and they cost a little bit of money, but they're going to grow year after year. Mm -hmm. Make sure that wherever you go to, ask them if they use or don't use neonics. Neonics would get uh, pesticide and it would get systemic and make the insects ill. But you know what? A lot of times in my life, I haven't been in a place where there's a house and a yard. So maybe an apartment with a deck or a community garden plot that I rented. And you can get a big pot and you can get some of these pollinator plants and plant them there and observe and help out our pollinators. That are oh, and they, and they will just give you beauty and calm too. So if you're lucky enough to be somewhere where milkweed lives, maybe in your yard or neighbors, and you find a caterpillar or an egg, or an egg we want to show you a couple hints or tips for raising it from egg to adult. You know what though, Stacy? before we get any farther, I do want to uh, remind you about that new research that's oh, coming out. Thanks for reminding yeah. me. Yeah. So just within the last year, there's new research saying that even though it really helps monarchs to rear them in captivity for them to not be preyed upon or eaten, if you raise them past 4th of July, those later monarch butterflies, they're not as hardy. Uh, and they also sometimes get kind of discombobulated and get confused when they're trying to go on the migratory path, whether it has to do with the sun rising and setting. So we're encouraging, based on that research, to only raise them early in the summer and stop around 4th of July and don't raise large groups of them, maybe one or two or five, maybe 10 at the most. So. If you're going to raise them, you need access to a lot of milkweed that's on your property that you can pick, and you need a container. You need a container that has um, open to the air, so it's got ventilation, either it's got some mesh screening, or it's got holes in the top. This is a critter cage that you just get at a pet store or on Amazon. These are specially designed for raising caterpillars, and they, you need to be able to get in and out of them so that you can 
put the milkweed in and out of them and also clean out all of that grass or the poop. So um, you can put the milkweed in vases, old deli containers with holes in the top, pop cans or uh, bubbly water cans, and then you want something over the top that you can poke small holes into, just big enough for the milkweed stems, but not so big that the caterpillars, if they fall off, go in and drown. Yeah. Why do you put newspaper in yours again? Oh, well, you mentioned grass, and oh, yeah. Stephanie, Stacy, you were also the person who said that caterpillars are eating pooping machines. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's easier to clean it up. Plus, after the caterpillars have matured and they've gone into their chrysalis, yep. when they come out as butterflies, one of the first things they do is they pump their wings and a fluid comes out, and that bright red fluid might stain. So it's Whatever's good to have down. something underneath them. Makes sense. Sounds really good. Or you can come up and make your own out of like a shoebox and some other things. So yeah. you were just talking about some of the stages of the life cycle of a monarch butterfly. Oh, and yeah. I think, don't you get to have a special guest next? I do. To talk about those life cycles. I can't wait. Very special guest. Yes. All right. Well, have fun with that guest in a yeah. minute. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hey. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, that's all right. Hey. That's okay. Uh what are you what are you doing? What do you got there? Oh, well, I have this milkweed that I rescued from the side of the path and there were some caterpillars that hatched from eggs and I'm looking at them. They are getting bigger. Oh, caterpillars? Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Oh, what kind is. are they? Oh. Are they are they swallowtail like me or painted lady or morning clock? No, 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 no. They're the most beautiful butterfly of uh -oh. all. No. The monarch. Oh. Oh, what's Mo the matter? Monarchs, monarch. Oh. Everybody gets so excited about the monarch this and the monarch that. Well, oh. swallowtails are pretty expensive. Uh, special too, but well, yeah, we are. Thinking. Yeah, I, I, I was just looking at this one, and it's a monarch. And you know, yeah, I wonder, Cal. Yeah. Could you help me? Oh, I can. Hey, wait. Are, are we? Are we on? Are, are, am I going to be famous? Oh yes. <gasps> You're oh. going to. People are going to be watching this and <laughs> learning. Oh, oh, oh. I would love to help. Okay. Anything to give my fellow swallowtail brothers and sisters a good name. Huh? <laughs> okay, how can I help you? Well, I wanted to talk about the monarch butterfly uh, life cycle. Okay. And I wonder if you can tell everybody what is the first part of the life cycle. Oh, oh this is easy. I got uh -huh. it. I got it. All okay. of us uh, all of the butterflies start out the same way. I even have a picture. Hold oh, on a minute. Just, just, just a second. It's oh, down here wow, somewhere. Wow, Cal is doing that. I'm going to put this down so I don't drop it. I wonder what he's going to show us. Oh, what is it? Oh, Cal, it's not... Cal, it's not polite to talk with your mouth. Oh. I said it starts with an egg. It Sorry. does. Oh, that, that, thank you. Okay. It does. It starts with an egg. And on yeah. this picture, there's actually two small eggs. The monarch eggs Ooh. look like little white pearls, about the same size as the head of a pin. And teeny I'm going to put tiny. this. Yeah, oh, they're very tiny. I'm going to put that right here. Ooh. What hatches from the egg? Oh, well, I'll tell you in just a minute. Do you know how they get out? Well, how do they get out? They chew their way out of there. Can you believe it? We yeah. chew our way out of the egg case. Ha! Then what do you do after you get out of the egg case? Uh, we start eating. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we even munch part of the egg case. <laughs> oh, hey, well, that's pretty smart. Yeah. You'd well, be, oh, you'd be, yeah? I kind of got distracted there. So wait, you wanted to know what happens next? Oh, yes. What happens after the egg? Okay, so you're only an egg for a little bit, and then you hatch out, and you turn into a... 
Little tiny caterpillar! Yes, that's Let me give like you a picture. Else. Hold on. Oh, Cal, where did you go? You tell them, you tell them the fancy oh. schmancy word for caterpillar. You know, there is a fancy word for caterpillar. It is larva. Can everybody say larva? Larva. <laughs> oh, thank you. Can you, yeah, I'll take this out. Can you say oh. larva? Larva. There we go. And actually, this picture shows a larva that is just at its last stage. It goes through five stages, or another word for those stages is called an instar. Starts teeny tiny. By the time it's done, it's about that big. And then it does something very special. Cal, do you know what that oh, caterpillar does? I think it makes a silky button. Uh -huh. It hangs by one of its back uh, pro legs, and then it practices its letters. It practices its letters? I mean, what? just wait, one letter. Uh -huh. It's not a C no. for Cal. It's oh. not an M for Mary. No. They practice and they do a J. A J shape. So they go into a J shape, and they can hang in a J shape for 24 hours. Whoa. That's a long time. It's upside down, that's right. Whoa. So after that, yeah. it actually splits its skin again. Oh, yeah. And it does a funny dance, and the skin falls off, and it forms something else. Oh. Can you show us? Oh, I'll show you. Okay. I know I don't like uh, to give the monarchs credit, but it is beautiful. Okay. Hold on a minute. All right. All right. Hurry up. Hurry up. Go, go, go. This is so beautiful. I want you to see it. Oh, this is the chrysalis. And there's another special name for that. It's a pupa. Pupa. It, it's bright green, just like you, Cal. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and it has gold dots on it. Now, after being in that chrysalis for Mm, about 10 days, it will become, the, the chrysalis shell becomes clear and you can actually see the wings of the butterfly through it. It, it gets very dark, but you can see the orange and the black. Fancy and, schmancy. Yeah. I do that too. After I'm coming out of my chrysalis, I get dark and you can see my wings are going to open. Well then, what is it after it comes out of its chrysalis? Oh, uh, it's a... Uh... Oh, it's an adult butterfly! That's it. Let me go get a picture of the monarch, monarch. Hold on. I'm sure you all know what they look like already. There we go. There is the adult. And I know that this is a female because she is laying an egg and starting oh. the next part of that life cycle. Thanks for helping, Cal. Oh, no problem. Always aiming to please. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi again. So you've learned about the life cycle of a monarch butterfly and how to help them out, maybe by planting some uh, milkweed and pollinator plants or just observing them out in their environment on a walk. Um, now we're going to quick get into their migration and how we learned about that. Well, you know, it's really interesting. It wasn't that long ago that Dr. Frank Urquhart and other researchers found a way to figure out where those butterflies go in the fall. So what they did was they put tags on the butterflies and then they tracked where those tags were found. And they found that the butterflies that start way up here in Minnesota end up down in El Rosario, Mexico, where they overwinter in the Oyamel fir trees, and then those same butterflies travel or migrate back up to Texas in the spring. Those butterflies lay eggs, and that generation ends up back up here in Minnesota. Incredible. Citizen science at its best, people working together to figure things out. So the tagging project itself is uh, a small sticker. Uh, it's sticky like a stamp or a poster stamp. And they you either when you're either rearing a monarch, an adult monarch, or you've caught one in a wild with a, 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 a mist net or a butterfly net, you would hold the butterflies between your fingers carefully, minimizing how much you touch the wings. Because if 
oh, that powder comes off, that's actually their microscopic scales of their wings. Then with that tag, um, it would go on their hind wing on the disco cell. The tag is really a sticker. It's got the email address for the University of Kansas, the website and the phone number, and then a specific number specific to this monarch. So if I tagged this monarch here in White Bear Lake Township of Minnesota, and it migrated and got all the way down to Texas or Mexico and someone caught it, they could take that information and email it in or call it in to find out the migratory pathway and the route. We wouldn't tag butterflies now though, would we? Not in June. Oh, uh, you know, we would do it later in the summer because those that is the, the, the generation that's gonna make the migration. And these tags are nice and small and light. I think about if you're tracking some of the birds, uh, the raptors, or a bear, or a deer, they have those heavy either backpacks or those collars with the heavy batteries for them. That wouldn't work because that would weigh them down and they wouldn't even be able to fly. That's why it's so lightweight, so they're yeah. balanced in their flight. Yeah, so they're not hurt by it at all. No, not it doesn't hurt them at all. The other piece is when you are tagging, you have to record some information. You need to write down whether they are reared or raised or in captivity in a tent or whether you caught them out in nature and also if they are male or female oh and this is so cool you guys could figure this out too and tell people if the butterfly that you see is a male or female what, what so do, do you notice for? anything different about these two butterflies besides the background well i notice that some of the veins on the wings are thicker on one and thinner on the other these are thicker, these are thinner, and then there's some blobs along one of the vein lines that seem kind of large. Those are over here. These are on a male, and those are scent glands to let off those pheromones or those smells so that they can communicate with each other. Yeah, so look for the black dots, then you'll know if it's a boy or a girl butterfly. So it's an interesting process, and because of it, they figured out where monarchs go and where their offspring return to. We hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about monarch butterflies and their life cycles and how to help them out and how to appreciate their amazing, uh, unique lives. And getting outside and taking a look for something that's beautiful and fragile at the same time. Take care and hope you can get outside soon. Goodbye. Bye.